is Jaden Lee. I make college and lifestyle related content and welcome to my channel. Okay, so today we're gonna decode college lingo. Okay, so this is gonna be a college vocab uh, kind of video. All right, so your application process is already stressful and daunting enough, but on top of that, they throw on all of these terms that have to do with um, contracts and acceptances and all of these things. And most of the time, we don't even know what they mean. So, uh, and a Google search can be really cryptic and hard to like decipher because they give you like, it's like they substitute one big word for a bunch of other big words. And it just, it just, you still end up confused. So um, I'm gonna give you um, the names of like these different, these different terms. I'm gonna give you what they mean in layman's terms. I'm gonna give you what they mean. Regular words. Let's start with deadlines, okay? So we're gonna start with your early action deadline. So your early action deadline is not binding. All you have to do is turn in your application by this certain deadline, your early action deadline, and then um, you get an earlier decision. It's not binding. Once you get your decision, you do not have to go to that school. You still have free will to choose where you go. But uh, basically, you have a uh, priority to scholarship consideration because you have or you are one of the first people to submit your application. And usually they do it on like a basically it's based on merit scholarships, at least is based on how much money they have in their budget for that year. But priority is given to those who apply early. So if you're going to apply early, apply early action. It's not binding and you get priority scholarship consideration and you get an earlier admissions decision. OK, moving on. Early decision, on the other hand, is binding. And let me explain that to you. So basically, it has the same criteria as early action. But if you get accepted early decision, you have to go to that school. Meaning, if you're going to apply early decision, you can only apply early decision to one university. And you cannot apply early decision to one and early action to other. If you're applying early decision to one university, you cannot apply to any other schools until you hear back from that college. Because if you got in, that is where you're going unless they don't give you enough financial aid for you to be able to afford to attend but that does not happen very often so basically only apply early decision if you're dead set on this school this is your first choice you don't care how much um it's gonna cost you or if they regardless if they give you scholarships or not this is where you're going and that's your dream school and you're only your top option then apply early decision. But if you are still debating and jumping between choices and you're not entirely sure, do not apply early decision because if you get in, you are stuck. And if you apply early decision and apply to other places and um, you get accepted into your early decision school, you must withdraw your applications from all of those other schools, which is a big hassle. So if you only, if you have a dream school and that's where you wanna go, apply early decision to that one and don't apply anywhere else until you hear back. But, if you're still deciding, do not apply early decision. Don't do it. Restrictive early action. Okay. So restrictive early action has the same kind of feel as early decision. You can only apply to that one school under restrictive early action. You can't apply anywhere else until you hear back from that school. But the difference is in restrictive early action, you are not obligated to go to that school. You just have... Um, Priority scholarship consideration, um, just like early action, um, all of the perks, but the only downfall is you cannot apply early anywhere else until you hear back from them, but it's um, not as strict as early decision to where you have to go once you hear back if you get in. Um, it's restrictive early action, on the other hand, you don't necessarily have to go. So um, it's kind of like the happy medium between the two. So there's early action where you have free will, apply anywhere, babes. Go anywhere you just get money more uh chance to get money okay restrictive early action you can um you still get more chance to have money but um you can only apply to that one school but you don't have to go if you get accepted early decision can apply nowhere else if you get accepted you gotta go and you still get op obligation over money so but yeah that's the difference between those three types of deadlines and usually the um they're on the same date you just have to make sure you look at which one you click because a lot of people by accident end up applying early decision and that's not what they need to do and then you're you're stuck so it happens but um i just want to let y'all know this is what each thing means so we don't get tripped up we don't get tricked and 
you know, we got our heads on straight and we're ready to go where we want to go. You, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's the difference between those three things. After you get your admissions decisions and what each thing means. Okay, congratulations. You see, congratulations. You already know that you're either you're accepted. But um, there's two types of acceptances. There's an acceptance and there's a conditional acceptance. Okay, so you get accepted, completely accepted. There's nothing really else you have to do um, as far as the application process. Now you're moving on to the next steps and you're um, filling out your intent to enroll. You're paying your, you're paying your deposit fees and all these other things. You're accepted, you're good to go. Conditionally accepted, you still uh, are moving on to the next steps because you still have technically been accepted into the university. However, there's a few more hurdles you have to jump over. Usually, um, you get conditionally accepted if you're... Um, your application was strong, but your G, like some of your stats were lower than they need. Like your GPA um, is a little up, bit up under where they want it to be. So um, they want you to send in another transcript or not even that, but they maybe want you to take an entrance exam. Your SAT um, scores were not good or not where they want them to be. And uh, they want you to maybe retake the exam and get a higher uh, grade so you can be completely accepted. But both thing with both acceptances you are admitted into the university so there's nothing really you have to worry about just be on the lookout for um what the extra steps they want you to do it kind of depends university university so if you're conditionally accepted make sure you talk to your admissions counselor about that and what exactly you need to do to be fully accepted or what all of that entails okay next we're going to talk about the deferral okay so a deferral usually is they don't tell you no but they don't tell you yes. It's that in the middle feeling that gives you that anxiety in the pit of your stomach. So it's not a congratulations and it's not a my condolences or I'm sorry. So I mean, a deferral is not a rejection. So do not, deferral is not denied. So if you do get deferred, do not lose hope. Keep your faith in God, keep praying. And um, usually, um, like I said, with conditional, it's kind of like the same, but they want to see more from you. So really more with deferral, they want, they need you to send in extra stuff. They need you to uh, send in a, a letter of recommendation maybe, or they need you to send in a resume, uh, or they want you to send in, they need you to get your GPA higher and send in an updated transcript, or uh, they want you to retake your SAT and you send that in. But um, they can't really, they can't accept you fully until they see everything that you can possibly give them and if it's enough for them then they'll accept you or they can deny you from there but deferral does not mean denial so make sure if you do get deferred you are on you are on that admissions office you are emailing who you need to email contact who you need to contact make sure you have all of that information so you can make sure you're good rejection um we all know what a rejection is but um usually it's like at this time we cannot give you offer you a place at our university um, but with rejection, there's always the, uh, you're always allowed to transfer. If you spend your first two years at another four-year university, or you get your basis out the way at a community college, you are still eligible to, um, transfer and be a transfer student into that university. So if that's your top choice and you end up getting rejected from it, there is still hope that you can still attend that university. Just might have to wait a couple years. Okay. Lastly, we're going to talk about being waitlisted. Okay. So waitlisted. It's kind of in the same boat as a deferral, but not really. Um, I say that because um, it's not an acceptance or and it's not a denial. But basically, um, waitlisted means that you meet all the criteria and you are good enough to be on campus. However, um, that school is probably at capacity. And if um, students who have already been admitted and submit their attempt to enroll decide to drop and go to another route, then wherever you are on that list um, can be placed, um, can have the opportunity to replace students who are leaving. So you have you have made the criteria, you are good enough to be here, but unfortunately there's not enough room. So we you are on the wait list and we're just gonna have to see and play it by ear. And if people leave, enough people leave in order for you to take somebody's place, then amazing. And if not, then we'd have to um, find another school option. So um, those are the four different types of admissions decisions that you can receive. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys about um, trying to figure out where you are. Just no matter what, just don't lose hope. Um, accepted, deferred, deferred, waitlisted, or rejected, there is still an opportunity that you can go to that school. It might not be the year you want to be on campus, 
but there's still that opportunity. So don't give up. Don't let that rejection hold you down. Don't let that um, um, conditional acceptance hold you down, that deferral, nor that wait list, okay? Just, just make sure you stay on your toes and you stay on your top of your grades and get active and participate. And um, at the end of the day, God's got you. So just keep your faith in that for real. So now we can talk about the types of admissions um, colleges go through when they're reviewing your application. Okay, so we can start with regular admission, and that's when um, colleges receive your applications. Once everything on your end is complete, they get it, they review it, and they release everybody's information, your acceptance, your denial, your deferral, maybe your wait list, or whatever whatever may have you um, that is your status on that application. They release it all on the same day. Um, so you have to wait no matter how early you apply or how late you apply. As long as it's before the deadline, everybody's going to find out on the same day. Or at least they're going to send out the information to everybody on the same day. Um, next is rolling admissions. Rolling admissions is a lot different from regular admissions. Rolling admissions is as soon as you submit that application, there are still deadlines. Like as long as you submit it before a certain date, you can um, be early action or early decision or restrictive early action or whichever one you choose. Um, you'll still get that admissions decision earlier than people who did regular decision. However, um, rolling admissions, they get your application as soon as it's complete, they review it, they make a decision right then and there after they review it, and you have access to that decision um, a lot quicker. You don't have to wait for all of these other applicants to get their decisions out the way. They release them um, to you really fast. So it could, it could take two weeks, it could take a week, two weeks, a month. But once they get to your application, they're giving you that information about your status almost immediately. Um, so that would be rolling admissions. Um, there's also, they also do need blind admissions. Um, need blind admissions can be rolling or regular, but um, that just means they don't look at how much income you have or how much financial aid they would have to give you in order to accept you. Some colleges do, and um, if you meet the criteria, however, you would have to, they would have to give you a lot more aid than sometimes that's a hindrance but a lot of colleges are need blind, which means it doesn't matter how much um, aid they would have to give you. If you qualify, you qualify and they will accept you. So make sure you be on the lookout for that as well. I know it's complicated and there's a lot of words and a lot of things uh, going through your mind, but I promise you, um, once you get into this application process, it's all gonna go smoothly and you're gonna know exactly what you wanna do. So just, um, just pray on it, I'm telling you, it's stressful but you got it. It's not, it's nothing you cannot conquer. It's nothing that you can't do. So, um, I hope this helped. I hope this cleared up some confusion because sometimes Google is not as helpful with trying to figure out what the heck these college things mean. I'm like, Hey, what is this? And they're like replacing words with even bigger words. And that's just not very helpful. So I thought I would, you know, put it in layman's terms, give you a, um, maybe, yeah, a little college admissions vocab video. So, I hope this was helpful and insightful to all of you. I love you so much. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you need more content like this. If you have any more ideas of things you'd like to see from me, hit me up. You can uh, follow me on Twitter or Instagram, um, both at Jayla H underscore JD. And um, you can ask me questions. I promise you, I, I don't bite. So if you have any questions or any content suggestions, you can comment them down below or you can contact me personally on either of my social medias. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, baby.